Hello. Then. Now. Episode number 500. Forever. Looks like hell froze over. Without any more further ado. To give. Let's jump straight into the show. Hello, back to episode number 27 of the TW9 challenge run. We are here Tuesday the 20th of August 2024 for ECW. Ignore the picture here. We're no longer in the era of extremely cool wrestling. I, just, I knew I forgot something. I changed the brand background, but I didn't change the, the logo for the TV show. But yes, he's gone. The boogeyman is out of here. We're now back to, you know, normal around here. Roman Reigns, he appeared at SummerSlam. We're going to see him tonight. Also going to hear from Heyman, and um, we also have the Wyatt Seven making their in-ring debut against Austin Theory, Matt Cardo, and Kurt Hawkins in our main event. I have any more further ado, though. I think there's actually no new champions on ECW. Yeah, correct. I have any more further ado, let's jump straight into the show. Paul Heyman is the first man who makes his way down to the ring. <laughs> and he just sits there with a big smile on his face. And he goes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to ECW. Big pop. This is, over the last few months, as I took time away from this company and this brand, we saw the demise of ECW in a very specific way, in all but name only. ECW was dead and that was dead because of the man who had been entrusted in overseeing this television program that being of all people Vince Russo now at SummerSlam a bunch of people many of whom I don't particularly see eye to wire with normally came to stand by my side and they came in the name of ECW to emerge victorious and take this company, these initials, back to where they should be. And of all the names, there's one in particular that I really have to pay thank you to. A man who, his history with me, may be the deepest of them all. And he's the last person I expected to come to my aid last week, but he did it, and then he came out on top at SummerSlam for me, in the name of my team. So, ladies and gentlemen, main event, Jey Uso. Jey Uso comes out, he's eating, he takes the mic from Heyman, and they sort of like have a weird little exchange, or like a weird little face-off, and Heyman does leave the ring and like lets Jey talk. But it's still kind of tense between them, they're not buddy-buddy, because obviously they're not. And Jay takes the mic and he goes, So how are we doing here tonight? Yeet. Yeah. At SummerSlam, my back was against the wall, loose. I saw three men standing up against me. And people all thought, Jay, you ain't gonna do this. The numbers game, they're too much for a tag guy like you. I don't know how many times I've gotta prove that I'm main event damn Jay Uso here. But hey, I proved it again last night. But of course, there's a couple of elephants in the room that I do have to address. The first being Roman Reigns. It says, Roman, I don't understand why you came to my aid at SummerSlam. You had your wise man's back, Oose. You had your issues with Solo walking around here like he's big league in you, Oose. But things between you and I, they ain't cool. They'll never be cool. Again, you understand that? As for me, I hear a lot of people online speculating what's next for Jay, a him and Jimmy back together. My brother, he's also a snake in the grass. I can't trust him as far as I can throw him, Oose. What we did the weekend, that was just out of instinct. Nah, there's only one thing on my mind, Oose, and it's not Jimmy, it's not Roman, it ain't even Heyman. It's that now we're back to where we should be here on this brand. I need to be back to where I should be, and that's at the top. 
on that says ECW champion. Out comes Adam Cole on the Paragon. He goes, Jay, first of all, welcome back, buddy. You know, it's been a while since I've seen you out here. I was starting to think we'd never come out here and see you, hear you say your dated catchphrases ever again, but, 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 congratulations. You did impress a lot of people at SummerSlam, myself included. You know, I already had, you know, my feet up backstage relaxing because I proved without a shadow of a doubt the night before that I was the greatest hair on ECW, putting down that spooky son of a bitch, Alistair Black, and putting his house of black in the dirt. And now... I come out here, Jay, and you, it's you who wants another shot at me. Do you not remember King of the Ring, Jay? It was here I do, boss. You only won that match because a warden getting involved. If it's just you and I, one-on-one, -on -one, main event, Jay, you so putting your ass in the dirt. <laughs> I'm called Oscar. Is that so? <laughs> well, Jay, unfortunately, I'm a fighting champion. And you have done nothing. In my mind, to earn a championship opportunity, sure, you may have come out on top for ECW at SummerSlam, but hey, that was a tag team match. You can't just walk to the front of the line and let people just let you get the opportunities back that you deserve, okay? Because I'm looking for the future for this championship. I'm looking beyond you, beyond Aleister Black, to everybody else. And I've got to deal with idiots like Joe Hendry making songs about us. He's not going to get to walk around here run in his mouth and not spitting a smack in the tea fiver. But first, Jay, since you're all out here alone and you've got no family by your side, I'll have the Paragon to give you a nice reintroduction to ECW. They, like, corner Jay Uso, Jay Uso starts fighting him off, but obviously there's five of them and there's one Jay, so the numbers game is in favour of them. When out come Joman, they storm out from the back. Hendry getting involved, Braun Strowman, of course, there's, they're still outnumbered, but one, there's one Braun here, he can manhandle the Fritz brothers by himself, because he's a big man, and he, like, powers through the rest of the Paragon, sending them all flying, and Adam Cole scurries away with Cesaro and Ziggler and JC, and yeah, little opening segment, Jey Uso, you know, still got his eyes on that championship, uh, as a single star, despite, you know, the, the, the stuff with his brother at, at SummerSlam. We then cut backstage, and Heyman's talking with the rest of Team Heyman from EC from SummerSlam. He goes, now, you know, you had Jey Uso out there tonight. He was really the one who ideally got all my thanks for what he did at SummerSlam. But all of you, all of you played a part. Whether I like you or I don't like you, you all played a part in making ECW back to what it is. So... I see you stand before me, Kyle, as the as the television champion, but you all deserve a shot at becoming a champion, so here's my pitch. Here on ECW, we, we fight for our opportunities. So that's why next week, we're going to have a fatal four-way match. All four of you, you know, Hook, KO, Ray, and Sheamus are going to face off in a fatal four-way with the winner getting an ECW television championship match against Kyle O'Reilly the following week. And then they all go, yeah, you know, fine. But just let you know one thing, you know, that chance opportunity, it's mine. It's always that so, fella. You see, we may have been partners and disrespected the same way by Vuso, but now that's over, I'm not afraid to kick your teeth down your throat. And Ray goes... Relax. You know, ECW is back to the ECW I remember, and I need to make sure people remember who the hell I am. And Hook's just like, hey, you know, yeah, I'll be there too, throwing you all around. Be pretty fun. Then they all leave. And then Florence walks in. He goes, hey, Paul, you know, you wanted to, to see me? He goes, I did, you know, first of all, now I've got Russo out of the way. I'm glad to see you're still ECW Women's Champion because we could do a lot of great things together on this brand. But there's do one thing I need to run by you real quick. And like they walk off, we don't hear what they're talking about. 69 rated tag team match. Uh, the Church of Moose defeat Annie Neeson, and Zion Quinn. A Moose pinning Zion Quinn with the game breaker in 602. 56 for Annie Neese, 51 for Zion Quinn, 54 for Moose, and a 72 for Apollo who carried the match. I saw a negative chemistry note there. I was worried it was going to be Moose and Apollo. But no, it's it's the Jobber team who won't ever team up again. Even though they are both, you know, like, 
dude bros. So, but yeah. And after the match, Apollo grabs the mic. Because what you just saw was the latest in the long line of the Musaya purging this roster of its sins. At SummerSlam, the great sinner known as Karrion Cross, the original Archangel of Destruction that guided the Musaya to the darkness, was quelled. But something tells me, like every demon of darkness, he's not quite defeated. That's why it is with you by our side and you all believing in the great church of Moose that the Musaya will get the energy he needs, the belief that he needs to finally quell this damn sinner once and for all. So carry and cross wherever you're at. If you think about getting one over on the Musaya, it'll be on your head. We then get a carry and cross promo video. And he sat there in the darkness, of course, because he's carry and cross. <laughs> and he goes, hey, it'll be my head, huh? Well, unluckily for you, Moose. I'm like a hydra. You cut one of my heads off. Two more were spawn. At SummerSlam, you thought you quelled my sins? Never. You may have defeated one of my sins. But last time I checked, there were seven. And I am the embodiment of all seven sins. So you can walk around here preaching clarity on yourself. The darkness is where you were born, and the darkness is where I'll send you back. <laughs> we then got back to the ring. Chelsea Green's in the ring now. She's got a microphone. She goes, "Um, is this thing on? Okay, I need to. First of all, Paul, I don't, I don't respect you not giving me microphone time here. Okay, Russo, but giving me microphone time. Okay, you're already proving that you're a lot worse than he is, Heyman. Okay, but second of all." I need you guys to listen to me and understand the situation I found myself in. I've got to be a roadie for J-Flow. I mean, I don't even like their music, and I've got to listen to it every single day and carry around their bags. It's not fair. Someone like me deserves better, you know. I'm too pretty to be a roadie. I deserve to be a superstar on the main stage. And that main stage here on ECW, so anybody back there who thinks that they're better than me, come and prove it. <laughs> That's when Florence's music hits. The ECW Women's Champion storms out and <laughs> she beats <laughs> Chelsea Green in short order with a rain flow. 60 for Chelsea, 84 for Florence. And yeah, <laughs> just a short little match, nothing more to it. But it does get Florence out there, which was the main reason to do it. And after that, she does grab the microphone. And she goes, boy, is it good to have, you know, this brand back to the way it was. Because you see, I, I was forced to suffer months and months of being a poster girl for a brand that I didn't even want to be a part of. Okay? I came to ECW to be part of this revolution, this show that I thought breathed my ideals for professional wrestling. And over the last few months, I've seen this damn show go down the toilet and there's nothing else I could really do about it because it was all the men fighting over each other. So, ladies, I'd like to invite the entire women's locker room out there right now. And then all the women come out, they stand on the stage. And Florence is like, it's been a tough few months for the women's locker room. And I know because I'm at the head of it. Now, I've done my best as the champion of this brand, as the champion for every single one of you. And I'm not saying that none of you deserve to be champion. What I'm saying is... Some of you need to step up. Okay, because I came to ECW, an outsider from SmackDown, to take part of this division. Rhea Ripley came to ECW, an outsider from Raw, to challenge for my championship. When are the ECW girls going to get their turn? Because here I stand, your champion, and I know when I drop this championship, the person who defeats me for it will be the one who stepped up to lead this division into the future. But who's it going to be? It could be any one of you. It could be Liv Morgan. It could be Kelsey Cook. Ivy Nile. These other women that have never had opportunities. You could also have Ruby Soho. 
or Alba Fire, Hikaru Shida, Naomi, all of these women, the talent in this division is there. We just need something, someone, to step up. And of course, the microphone, like we hear someone start speaking, and it's Sasha Banks. She steps forward out of order and goes, First of all, just because you're the champion doesn't mean you speak for all of us. Okay? You know, we just had this entire months of all the people on the show being able to fight each other because they didn't see either why. But let me tell you something. Okay, just because you're the ECW Women's Champion doesn't mean you're the best or the most important women on this roster because I'm here. It's Mia. So, as your CEO, a position of importance a lot higher than you as the women's champion, you don't need to wait for anybody to step up because I did that, like, <laughs> nine years ago. Back when you were still over in the UK, I don't know, doing whatever you were doing. I was out here changing the game before you even got here. <laughs> and first of all, second of all, don't think I forgot what you did to me last week. After that, after I took out Rhea Ripley. For good. You're welcome, by the way. You shoved me on my ass. You didn't show me the respect that I deserve. And I was goes, yeah, whatever, it's great, you know. I knew you were going to come out here, but I guess as the Liberty Champion, you know, you, you don't really have next at the Women's World Champ. Oh, wait. You lost at SummerSlam, didn't you? Yeah, okay, I did. And it's not my fault because it was that spooky witch, that weird girl who took the pin from Candace. Okay, it wasn't me. I had nothing to do with that. So if you want to keep running your mouth to the CEO, we'll have to find out who really runs this yard. Well, the CEO I'd love to, but that's actually going to bring me to my second part of my announcement that I spoke to Heyman about. But if you'd have just waited in line with the rest of the, <laughs> the, rest of the other women... Maybe you could have heard this firsthand about actually budding in here and thinking you're the main character. Anyway, to see which woman steps up as the next challenger for the ECW Women's Championship, we're going to get all of you involved. Every single woman that stands on that stage, and maybe even some that don't, in a tournament to determine who's next in line for this. And once we put everybody together, the winner will undoubtedly be the one who stepped up more than any other. And then, at high voltage, the next ECW branded pay-per-view, I'll defend this championship against the next face of the ECW women's division. And who comes out on top, we'll have to wait and see. But hey, Sasha, good luck. She sort of pats her on the shoulder and leaves. So yeah, like, I've become accustomed to it. I know, I noticed... You know, the, the women's division on ECW has not really been, like, compared to SmackDown especially, but also uh, Raw as well, to a lesser extent. It's definitely the third wheel, because like there's, there's Sasha, there's Florence, and there's a bunch of mid-carders, basically. So we need to try and elevate some of these women. And we're going to do that here with this big, overarching tournament. Like, I don't know if, it, I don't know if it's going to be 16. It probably is 16. Oh, let me count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 4, yeah, 16. There's 14 women here and then maybe two from, like, NXT. So, yeah, let's see who steps up. We then cut backstage. Kelly Kincaid is with Jimmy Uso. It's Jimmy, we heard from your brother, Jay Uso, earlier on tonight, and, you know, he he said things between you and him, you know, they're still gonna not going to be getting any better. After SummerSlam. And Jimmy goes, I get it, Oos. You know, quite honestly, I don't expect... Maybe if it's me and Roman, me or Jay, any of me or him and even. I don't expect this to be, you know, miraculously fixed. You know, our, our family went through a lot of crap these last few months. So, I don't, I'm not mad at Jay. I'm not going to get on my knees and beg Jay to forgive me. But now, Jimmy Uso is going to do his own thing. Jimmy Uso is going to prove to the world why he is just as good, if not better, than his brother. And that's going to start when Jimmy Uso, and then he's jumped by Warden from behind. And then Warden, you know, tosses him into a wall. That skin you know, goes, huh? You know, better than your brother, huh? Well, you know, I hate your brother. I ripped that championship away from your brother, and as long as I still still breath in my lungs, he's never going to get it back. But you, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, does it? You 
and your entire bloodline will pay for what you did to me. He throws Jimmy Uso for a wall. And he storms off. A6 rated 6 man tag. You know, we're back in this era of ECW, so, you know, we can run these just bangers on TV <laughs> that would fit out of place in the Russo era. The House of Black, I need to give them a nice win because obviously they all lost at SummerSlam. Alistair Black pins Lindsay to ride over Black Mass, so they beat Death from above. Although, look at the ratings. Pistolero, you know. Go off, King. 61 for Champa, 70 for Brody King, 80 for Alistair Black, 59 for Lince Dorado, 70 for Grand Mare League, and a 96 for our boy Pistolero here. Again, I think Alistair Black is declining. He is. So is Champa. No, Champa's just got poor physical condition, and he's not declining, okay? But yes. Pistolero with a 96, holy shit. Maybe he, <laughs> that's definitely caught my attention, that's all I'll say. I don't know how factored in he was into plans for the rest of the year, but I guess I'll have to make some for him now. But yeah, the House of Black do win. <laughs> we then cut backstage. Liv and Sonya, you know, they're talking about the tournament. They go, you know, the women's division doesn't need to step up, okay? I have what it takes to carry this division. You know, Sonya, you've been a women's champion on Raw and SmackDown before. I've been a champion on Raw before, but it's about time one of us got back to the top of the division. Sonya goes, hey, you know, I don't know if it's going to happen because there's 16 of us, but if we do meet each other in the tournament, may the best woman win. And they shake hands, and then the locker room door flies open and installs Becky with her two tag team, tag team tops over her shoulder. Lyra follows her. She goes, she sort of takes a look around and goes, so this is this this is the place, huh? And it's like, uh, can I help you? She goes, you know, I rush to the scene, Liv. I heard rumours that this women's division needed a shot in the arm. And well, <laughs> here I am. And Liv goes, uh, you're actually a raw girl. This is actually part of the problem we were talking about. It's time for the ECW girls to step up, not outsiders who came here because they're the tag team champions, okay? But he goes, first of all, thank you, I am the tag team champions. But second of all, I've been here for one minute and I'm already feeling disrespected by you. And Liv goes, you, you've disrespected our whole ass locker room walking in here. Like you own the place on your first ever appearance on the show. In fact, if you're going to stay here, you may as well wrestle tonight. But he goes, does she, Birdgirl, does she not listen to me? And she's like, what are you talking about? He goes, nose, broken, bloodied. I was gasping for air. I had to put oxygen on me after a traumatic experience at SummerSlam. Laura goes, that didn't happen. But, Birdgirl, you see, she's running her mouth here. But, you know, she's clearly the one who wears the pants out of these two, and not, not Sonya over here. So I was like, excuse me? Because so, you, as my underling, the tag team champion as underling, can take on Liv's little underling. Tonight, Larry goes, well, I, doesn't, I didn't even bring my gear. Becky, I didn't realize we were going to start fights. I thought we'd just come in to, you know, because we can, you know, just ex ex scope out the landscape of ECW's women's division. But he goes, yeah, well... Shit happens. Go get changed. And Lara goes, I don't have my gear. But he goes, we'll find some. Okay, now go. Go, 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 go. And then she ushers Lara out of the room and she's like, puts her head back in, like stares at Liv and Sonya and does like the eye pointing thing. And then leaves. Quick backstage, or not backstage, a pre-taped video from Zia Shea and Jagger Reed and Rip Fowler. You know, they're just on the streets of London or whatever. Yeah, so here it is. The greatest nation on earth. Great England. Now see, England for many years was plunged into the dirt by terrible leadership. From that right there. And he sort of points over to like the House of Parliament. There he goes. Having bad, unqualified people run places leads them to the dirt. We just got ECW out of the dirt. Okay, we got dragged into the dirt because a complete inept idiot was running the show. A complete dipstick called Vince Russo. But now this Mustafa Ali. You know, a man who I have a lot of respect for. He's a hell of a talent. But he's also a complete nutter wanker. So, myself, Rip Jagger, seeing firsthand what terrible leadership can do to a nation. 
will not let Mustafa Ali's reign get any further than this. It will simply be an idea in his brain, snuffed out by our insane techers. And then Greer Jew over here like, because once CSJ deals with Ali, we will become then recognized as the ECW Tag Team Champions. And they all leave. And we sort of get a lingering shot on, like, I don't know, Leicester Square or something. 80 rated match. Nice. Uh, yeah, sorry to feel the defeats Lyra Valkyrie 1150. I guess Lyra's wrestling in, like, spare Becky ring gear. Doesn't fit her quite well. <laughs> so, yeah. Sonya does win in 1150. 74 for Lyra and 69 for Sonya. But yeah, that's a nice win over... Do I do I say one half of the tag team champions? I mean, yeah, but also, you know, no. Yes. But yeah, Sonya Deville does pick up the win over Lyra. Nice. And then get a quick backstage segment. Jey Uso meets up with Joe and... We get a Jey Uso and Joe Hendry interaction. You know exactly what, how that goes. You know, yeet... You know, clapping of hands, they we believe, all that shit. So basically, this trio, you know, will be going into a six-man tag team match next week against the Paragons, Adam Cole, Dov Ziggler, and Cesaro. Next week, here on the good old ECW, you know, back, back with normal graphics, normal songs, all of it, we do have some big matches announced for the show, including that aforementioned six-man tag team match, where... Adam Cole, Cesaro, and Dolph Ziggler will team up to face Braun Strowman, Jey Uso, and Joe Hendry. And yeah, you know, <laughs> the Paragon haven't forgotten about Hendry's diss song about them last week. So that's how they've sort of been roped into this whole thing. Plus, the 16 Women Women's Championship tournament will officially get underway. We haven't we haven't learnt the brackets yet. So that's a WWE Championship tournament on Raw, and now an ECW number one contenders Women's Championship tournament on SmackDown. On SmackDown, ECW. So yeah, tournament mayhem here on WWE, but who knows if that's the last one. There might be another one coming soon. Who knows? Wyatt 7 entrance. <laughs> yeah, I'm using the normal Wyatt 7 pictures because, you know, it doesn't really matter. Like, we could pretend that's Kip Sabian, we could pretend that's Preston Vance, we could pretend that's the Bonnie. You know, <laughs> it's fine. But yeah, this is just their big entrance. They make their first entrance for their main event match with... I'm not expecting big ratings here because it's, you know, Eric Rowan, Kip Sabian, and Preston Vance against Austin Fury, Matt Cardona, and Kurt Hawkins. But I want it to go... On. Well, technically main event match because we have Roman Reigns as the main event. But yeah. 70. It's actually better than I thought it would be. Uh, Yeah. Let's see how these ratings are doing. Kip gets a 63, 50 for Preston, 52 for Rowan. Okay. It's actually not, not awful. But Kip Sabian specifically, you know, did really well. But yeah, of course, it is the White Seven who win. <laughs> Eric Rowan pinning Kurt Hawkins of a greetings from the north. Also, during the match, Austin Fury just walks out on his team. And leaves the major bros for dust. Kurt Hawkins takes a pin. And big Eric Rowan wins. I guess Ramblin' Rabbit is his name. Yeah, 53 for Kurt Hawkins. F Kurt Hawkins outscored Matt Cardona. Okay. Uh, is one of them decline? Oh, will be Matt if anybody because of the ratings. But no, it's just Eric Rowan. Okay, nice. He's just not as good as Kurt Hawkins. Sick. So and then seventy three for Austin Fury, who did most of the work here, and then you know got out before he could get the stink on him. Or but also I want to point out fifty seven wrestling rating, forty four crowd rating, seventy match. So yeah, that was definitely a lot better than I thought it would be. I thought you were going to get a rerun of the Tongans against the Dudleys. Our main event segment, Roman Reigns comes out. You know, new theme song, OTC t-shirt, and yeah. He gets into the ring. He has a microphone in his hand, but he's just mainly taking in the, re the reaction from the crowd. Before he can even speak, he's interrupted by Solo's music and the Tonkins by his side. Solo goes, welcome back. Roman, you see, you've been gone for a long time. Allow me to, to rem remind you who the hell I am. I'm your right-hand man. I'm your enforcer. 
But now, you, Tama and Tonga, you can all call me the same thing. You can call me Tribal Chief. See, Roman, this place of old about you, I found my own family. You used me to keep your ECW championship, and the second you lost that championship, you left and abandoned me. But it's cool, because I see your back now. But we don't need you around here anymore, Roman. We've got me on the damn tribal chief around here. You see this round my neck? It ain't going anywhere. So allow us to reacclimate you with this show. I remind you what happens when you mess with the new tribal chief. The Tongans get into the ring. They they jump Roman Reigns. And they start two on one attacking Roman Reigns. Then before Roman does fight out, nobody comes out to help Roman. No, it's the Tongans. He can take them on by himself. <laughs> he did delivers a big Uranagi to take down Tonga Loa. Superman punches Tama Tonga. Gives a big ooh-ah and a spear to Tonga Loa. Tosses him out of the ring. Spears t- Tamatonga, he rolls out of the ring outside to Solo. Then Roman sort of like gestures for Solo to get into the ring. And Solo does like put his hand on the middle rope and steps onto the apron. And then he just steps back down. As, as you know, Tamatonga's like, no, come on, my tribal chief, get out of here. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. All that shit. <laughs> and then Solo puts the Ulafala back around his, his neck and then just walks out. Roman's standing tall to NDCW. 75, sure, with the Wyatt 7 main event and, you know, Tonga Lower existing, <laughs> tanking their main event segment. Because I noticed it, I didn't comment on it, but it, it, it said Tonga Loa performed poorly, or, or he looked dreadful, I believe was the exact wording. But yeah, we're back in action. It's going to take a couple of weeks for you know, to get ECW back to where it was before, you know, Russo took over. But, well, that's more as well, you thought of the show. Do let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you next time for SmackDown's Fallout from SummerSlam. Well, we will see Sami Zayn defend his new United States Championship against Baron Corbin, because Baron Corbin won jackpot at SummerSlam. Plus, another Queendom meeting of the Senate, so let's see what they've got to say. See you then.